this is part one of my interview with Frank Music, and I started by asking him a little bit about his time in the US. I, I lived there for three years, and um, that's why many people haven't heard about me <laughs> for a while, because I, I was out there. Um, I do a lot more work out there now than I do here, um, which annoys a few people, but um, it's, this is more opportunity out there. Okay, so how are, you, how are you finding it back in the UK, apart from the rubbish weather? Um, well, I mean, we're all used to that now. I think... Um, being back in, in London, it's a great place to knuckle down and focus and concentrate on production work. Um, I don't really do much else here apart from produce and, and write. Yeah. I was going to say, you, you came out here pretty much just for work. Like, yeah. I, I don't. I don't really tour here anymore. I do all my touring in America. Oh, so. that's okay. It is, but it's like it's a contentious issue because. I don't have like a big enough or proactive enough fan base in England to, to uh, make touring more viable. I mean, you did your um, completely, and then I mean, really, it felt like your profile started to raise, but then that's when I sort of found out about you. And I actually kind of I became more of a fan when I heard I was a really big Alfie fan about about 16, 15, 16, now I'm 20. So, and I heard your remixes of their stuff, and that's how I kind of came across to you. I saw you at your gig at the OT in Oxford with um, Paula Keller and Pete's yeah. Club. And well, I mean, the thing is, I, I left <laughs> as my sort of career trajectory was kind of hitting really hard. Yeah. Mainly because. I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready to take on all of the, what, what could have come, which is the, uh, the fame game and everything like that. I, I wanted to just make music. I, I didn't want all the other stuff that came with it. And so leaving for America, I left um, for America two months after that album came out, which is like career suicide, um, you know, in terms of you're leaving as the album comes out to go to a whole new country so you're missing all of the uh, promotional stuff and everything like that but yeah I just I wanted to go to America before um, I, I missed my chance so I did that instead so would you ever be tempted to sort of make an album here and then stay here for a bit and try and not only like track the UK again but sort of try and do what you did before again it hasn't moved me to do that yet. I, I've, I've toured the length and breadth of this country previously and on, on numerous occasions. And um, I enjoy um, the United Kingdom very much. And, you know, there's no other country, countries like it. Um, but I'm always, always looking for a new challenge, and America is a great place to be challenging myself. So that's what sort of led you over there. So, being in America, did that influence your sound much? So, because when you brought that, would do it in the AM, which I'm guessing, did you make that in America? Yeah, it sounds, I could hear, it sounds a little bit different to the um, other stuff, and it sounds a bit, I don't want to say punchy, I don't know. No, it wasn't, it wasn't an album that I was proud of. Oh, um, no, oh, okay. No, that's right, yeah. <laughs> I'm not a fan. Um, it, I, know, I know what you're getting at, and, uh, I think due to the fact that my first album had such a, a me sound, very unique, um, the, the second record felt very uneven. It didn't feel like a true progression. Um, and I don't want to do the blame game, but I was signed to a US major label. I was trying to please them, keep them happy, and sacrificing my own happiness of what I wanted on the record. So there was, yeah, so there was a lot of like these collaborations and stuff on the record. Yeah. I didn't become a solo artist to become like a collaboration vending machine. But you know, when when you're, I, I didn't very much want to argue with the guy that signed Lady Gaga and stuff. Yeah, so that's that. I was yeah. like, I was like, well, this guy seems to know what he's doing. So, but it doesn't work for everyone. That's what you eventually realize. Okay, so when you did your collaborations with like. Far East Movement and Claire Carr and that kind of stuff was that, did you feel like that wasn't really you? Parts of it, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm a very collaborative person. Um, I mean, I work with a lot of different people. It comes with the territory. But on my own, having people collaborate where you hear them on my own material, normally I'm... 
I'm not going to say selective, but I, I, I'm much more sensitive to it than yeah. I would have done a lot less of it on, on, on that album than that choice. But hey, you know what? If I hadn't have done that record, I would never have known what not to do. To do. Yeah, so. it's a good way to look at it. So. But how, I mean, the only for any bin, you back in the UK for about 24 hours, but... And you started working on the album already. Yeah. How's that going? Good. I got a song done last night. Um, yeah. uh, the, the album, as it stands, um, will be called And So It Begins. And uh, it's exclusive. <laughs> no one else knows that. Um, Great. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's going to be about 15 tries. And um, we're going to get it finished by the end of February. Great. Okay, I was going to ask you that. Yeah. So, when um, I mean, talk about your album between the second book. With, on that album, you had a collaboration with Cara Salamando, which I really. I don't have to You know how to say her name. <laughs> it's like, I was about to say, but I cannot write. Oh, great. So, no, I loved that collaboration. So, um, how, have you got any plans for this album, or are you moving away from that completely? Well, well, a collaboration or working with Cara? <laughs> Oh, okay. Um, if it happens, it'll happen. Um, just like the car thing, that was a lot less um, self-conscious. That was more something that kind of happened. Um, we had a writing session together in LA, and um, we were just going to write a song. We didn't know what it was going to be for, or who it was going to be for, and then it just evolved into us writing. Something happened in your life, and then you decide, I'm going to write an album about this. Yeah, well, yeah. Because it felt like that with, with me, yeah. definitely. So, with, um, as you say, about, you say about the album, uh, the song with Cara, with, you set about writing a song. Yeah, so in that instance, um, Cara wrote a predominant amount of that song, and she wrote it about me, which is kind of interesting. She didn't tell me at the time. Oh, really? All the lyrical content that she came up with was to do with the, rela- the, the, the breakup that I was in, uh, sort of preempting. And, um, so, but every writing session is different. Generally, I prefer to work to a brief. So if someone says, we need a song for blah, 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 then I'll write a song for blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, but I don't really enjoy writing songs for other people. I prefer to produce music for other people, but I don't like... I, I think that the writing... I want to only work with artists who have something to say. Mm-hmm. If they just want to accept songs, they're just puppets, and I've got no time for people like that. It's not, it's not art. That's, that's just their business. Don't you see them as an artist? No, not really. I see them as they have talent of being a performer, um, you know, or they could be good at singing. But I feel that writing is what separates good singers from good artists because some of the best artists were never good singers so David Bowie was never a concerto or virtuoso singer but he wrote incredibly iconic and unique music yeah. as did the Beatles but they were never Whitney Houston <laughs> yeah it's, so it, it's, it's the lyrics that tend to move people more I think, it, I think people, it, it anchors people in it gives people more of a narrative to the, yeah narrative anchor people in yeah so with the between them um when I first listened to that, I was really excited about that album. So, um, I was on a really long train journey, so I saved it for that and just listened to it from start to finish. Where are you going to? Newcastle. So, Chasing Shadow is the first track on the album, and the first thing I thought, the introduction to it, I thought, Bacon Heart. Right, yeah. So, we sat, and then throughout the whole album, there was little songs like Capes that remind me a little bit of three little words. Yeah. Just the general sound, it sounded like you were going back a little bit. Oh, absolutely. Well, it, that, was, that was a very, very, I mean, you picked it up, and I'm glad you did because it was a very conscientious decision. I mean, however much the second album, people did like it. Some people liked it, some people didn't like it. I think it's a bit of a Marmite record. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it wasn't bad. There was a few, a few. I think, but if, if you were a sensitive listener and you were aware of my previous material, as as were you, it's like, well, it didn't make much sense. If it was a newcomer who just brought that out on its own, nothing to compare it to, then fine. But I think people were not expecting me to do that. Whereas between. That was my redemption record, almost. That was more like, I wanted to say, look, I can do this on my own. I don't need a record label. I produced and wrote the whole thing on my own, apart from the Kara track and uh, the song called Stronger, which is a co-write. I produced everything myself, and I wanted to say to myself, I can do this without anyone. 
So Stuart Price co-produced my first album. I mean, multi, like Grammy Award-winning producer. He did um, uh, Killer's second album, Madonna's last album. We'll be doing the next three Pet Shop Boys records. Like, super producer. And I was like, um, he was 30 when he co-produced that album. And I was like, I set myself a challenge of trying to outdo his work on Between. So I wanted it to... If you could play complete me in between, between uh, together, they'd feel equal, and it was like a production challenge for myself, and, and I feel I, I accomplished that. And the response to the tweet, from what I saw, seemed really positive. Yes, um, very. So, did that motivate you? Because it's quite quick, you've had Between, and it seems like you're quickly starting the next album. Well, I've had two albums out this year. I had Between, between and Between Us, yeah. yeah. Um, well, now I'm now I'm on side. The, the, the rule that I set myself at the beginning of this year was um, I set two rules. Uh, I no longer sell music. If people want to buy it, they can. But to sell music is no longer my problem. Um, just like you're probably not a radio producer because you want to be paid to be a radio producer. You just want to do that. And it's reminding myself that money is not a carrot for creativity. It helps, but it isn't the be-all and end. Secondly, um, the, what was the second rule that I had? It was a good one. Oh, yeah. Um, the one thing that I learned from being signed to a major was um, it, everything's quite slow. It's like, it's, you make the album for a year, then for the next six months you get ready for PR, promotion, tour, blah, blah, blah. And I hated that. So I thought, well, the only way that I can even potentially compete with these labels, because I mean, look, I don't have the hundreds of thousands of pounds to spend on publicity, like these major artists do now. So the only way I can win is by productivity. It's the only way I can outdo them. So their weakest thing that they have is productivity and originality. Um, you find that labels make a lot of fear-based decisions, so they only want to work on things that feel safe. So high output and keep things original. So would you? Are you now strictly against being signed to a label? Would you consider? It? I consider anything. Yeah. Um, it's never good to go through life, I feel, um, limiting yourself. Yeah. I just feel like I've grown out of it. I mean, and, and by the way, I'm very, I'm very thankful for the opportunity that I had. Because you would never have thought about me if I hadn't got signed. So I can't stick my nose up at that. It's just not me anymore. Yeah. Some people... But, I mean, a load of successful artists have had many record deals in their, in their career anyway. You know? I think with um, the internet the way it is nowadays, people will find you. Yeah, I mean, if the, if the music's good enough, yeah. people will... Yeah. Yeah, get shattered. I mean, I, I have this, I have this one thing. I don't, I don't like, I don't want to ever fall into the genre trap for a start. Mm -hmm. There's one thing I find about my music. It, it, it is electronic pop music, but at the same time, it's not a sound that everyone else uses, which would mean like the production value doesn't justify my chords, it's the songs that justify what I do. So you can produce the song any which way you want and they'd still sound like good songs. Whereas you've got all this dance music that's out at the moment, it's like EDM stuff, and it's just dance music. And so when dance music goes out of fashion, pretty much all those songs go out of fashion too, so.